Hey, I'm Mark Edward Lewis and welcome to Cinema Sound. Today we're going to be talking about the Mark of the Unicorn audio interface, the 1248, sort of Mark of the Unicorn's flagship interface. And we're going to be looking specifically at its discovery app. That's this incredible application that allows you to access all of the capabilities of the interface without having any special kind of program. You can access it on an iPad, an iPhone, or any web browser. As long as you've got your interface plugged in via thumb, Thunderbolt or 2.0 USB, you're in good shape. So let's open this app now. I'm on a Macintosh. Once you have it installed, it'll show up in your file menu, or you can open it directly from your Finder or desktop. We click here, and it will show you the Discovery app, all of the interfaces that you have connected. Right now, I've just got the 1248. Once we click on it, you'll notice it brings up a Firefox browser. It could have brought up Chrome, whatever your default browser is. This is the matrix window. We're going to talk about that in a different tutorial. Let's go up here to device. In the device window, it shows us all the hardware and a few cool other aspects of the interface itself. So we see here we're at the sample rate of 48 kilohertz. We're a uh, clock mode of internal. Now, because the 1248 has so many cool uh, hardware ins and outs, you can tell it to listen to some other clock source from its word clock uh, BNC connector. You can also tell it to listen to clock from, you know, your ADAT ins, uh, a or B, of which it has two cool versions, and then SPDIF, or have it locked directly to time code, which we talk about in another tutorial on Cinema Sound, how you can use this interface as, along with your laptop, as an on-set recorder and locked to camera. Dope. Super cool. For now, we'll keep it on internal. And then word clock itself. Right now, I'm actually using the wonderfully solid clock of the 1248 to power the rest of my studio. So I'm saying that word clock needs to come out of the unit and go out to all my other interfaces and, and um, other periphera. And then in this case, we want to follow the system clock. Down here, we have the inputs to the physical inputs to the interface. We have four mic preamps, XLRs. Each has a phase shift button, a trim knob, a 48 volt for phantom power, and then a pad. If things get too loud, we just click any of these. And it also shows up really cool on the front of the interface. We have two guitar or line level inputs on the front of the unit where we have a phase shift and the trim. And then all the quarter inch inputs, the eight of them, same kind of idea, the trim. Obviously, there's no pad or 48 volts on a quarter inch. As we move down, then we have the outputs. The outputs of the, uh, of the unit, here you have two stereo quarter inch TRS output jacks on the front uh, that can be controlled individually. And then you have their general output trim. You have a main uh, quarter inch output and a main monitor output, both of which are split mono. So left and right have two individual cables. You have a trim here. And then you can see here, I'm using the analog quarter inch outputs as surround for my surround system at Cinema Sound Studio B. So what is otherwise analog one, I'm calling left right, center, LFE, left surround, right surround. And then I actually use output seven and eight for headphone outputs to the studio. Now, what's really cool about doing the, this this way, having them set up this way, is you can click and add anything you want. You can call this, you know, grandma's big ziti if you want that channel. <laughs> but what I have done, because I have a room that's tuned for surround, each speaker has its own specific volume level, depending on its position and how it does. And we've, of course, tuned with pink noise. What I have done is instead of just trying to say, which I'll show you how to do in a second, and hope that all these settings are restored, I actually store the trim setting. You'll notice this is at minus 14. You might not be able to see that. There's minus 14. And I just put that. This is left minus 14, then right minus 11, center channel 14. So if I need to change this for some reason, I don't ruin my whole, you know, tuning of my room. I can just easily bring it back. And this is in decibels. So I know I'm, I'm, I'm good. LFE is here. Uh, and then uh, LS is an RS here. Now, what does this mean right here? Well, it's another note. And I love making notes on these channels because it helps me to remember, you know, how things are. 80 dB at zero fader minus 20. What that means is that if I put a minus 20 pink noise signal through the master output of any of my digital audio workstations using this setting or these settings here, I can expect as long as the faders at zero, 
on the master an 80 decibel output out of any one of the speakers that I have here in the studio. Again, a minus 20 decibel signal at zero dB on the fader, master fader, gives me an 80 decibel output from any of these speakers. And now I can change this if I want a different setting, and I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. There's a bunch of other things down here that are super cool, but really only we need to deal with if you've got multiple interfaces, multiple 1248s, which is super cool, but we won't deal with that right now. So up here, we have the actual saving of this parameter. Now, don't be confused. Each one of these device routing, mixing, aux mixing has its own individual save. So if you just save one of these, like let's say, oh, I want to save the device, it won't save the routing. That's a separate thing, which is a little bit of a drag on one hand, but really cool because you always want to have different setups and different mic routings, and you don't want to have to have a whole bunch of, you know, global saves, which is kind of a drag, far more of a drag than the way they have it here. So I actually consider it a feature. Yes. Yes. So I go here. And if I want to create a new device preset, I can do that by simply hitting create. I click and I can type in whatever I want. And I could say create. It will store it over uh, the USB. I'm connected via USB right now. And then if I go back here, you'll see there it is. Whatever I want setup. If I want to go back to the cinema sound setup, I click here, apply. It asks me if I want to apply it. It does, resets everything, and I'm good to go. This is a really simple way of storing whatever mic presettings you want, however you want to organize it, and then of course labeling outputs and all kinds of other things so that it's super easy for you. So for example, if you wanted to have a recording setup for a band, if you did that, you could have one setup. If you wanted to do another setup for uh, ADR or voiceover, you could do that. One for mixing, you can do that. So very facile. And we're really happy with the 1248 and pretty much all of those great Mark of the Unicorn audio interfaces. I've been using them for 15 years, a really long time. Check it out and go see us on the forum and the blog at cinemasound.com. Hey,